Okay, here's going to be some examples on Charles' Law. Um, example number one, a gas sample at 40 degrees Celsius. So 40 degrees Celsius Oops. occupies a volume of 2.32 liters. If the temperature is raised at 75 degrees Celsius, what will be the new volume at constant temperature? Okay, so one thing you want to probably do off the bat, especially when dealing with fractions, is to get rid of them. And the way we get rid of fractions is to cross multiply. So we're going to take the Charles Law ex expression and we're going to cross multiply the variables so we can get rid of the fractions. Because more often than not, you'll probably make a bigger mistake if you keep it as a fraction. So V1 times T2 equals V2 times T1. So I cross multiply my variables to make it easier. Uh, and now I'm no longer in a fraction. The okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to list my variables. So V1, T1, V2, and T2. All right, so volume one is 2.32 liters. And temperature one is 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, V2 is what we're looking for. That's my X. And T2 is going to be 75.0 degrees Celsius. Okay, one of the things you have to do with when performing gas law problems is that you have to convert your temperature to Kelvins. Uh, especially when it comes to Boyle's law, Charles law, K. Okay, Lussac's law, any of the gas laws, you have to convert to Kelvin. Um, so Kelvin equals degrees Celsius plus 273. So I'm going to have to take all my uh, temperatures and convert them to Celsius. So 40 plus 273 and we get 313 oops, 313 Kelvin. Okay, next is 75 degrees Celsius. I need to change that to Kelvin. So clear 75 plus 273, that's going to be 348 Kelvin. Okay, so um, next I need to solve for V2. So V2 is the variable in the isolate. And by crisscrossing your variables and making it um, like this without the fraction, it makes it much easier. I got to divide both sides by T1. There we go. Cross um, uh, T1 will cancel out and I'm left with V1 times T2 divided by T1 equals V2. Um, my temperatures are in Kelvin, my volume is in liters, uh, so that means my answer will be in liters when I'm done. So I'm just now going to plug in the variable. So uh, V1 is 2.32 okay, times T2, which is going to be 348 Kelvin. Divided by uh, T1, in this case, it's going to be 313 Kelvin. Okay, so everything's set up correctly. Everything's in its proper place. And now I'll do the math and the calculator. So 2.32, 2.32 um, times 348 divided by uh, 313. And we're going to round to the hundreds place and we're going to get to 2.58. And since my given was in liters, my answer will be in liters. And since this is Charles Law, it's going to make sense when your volume is increasing 2.32 to 2.58, your temperature should be increasing 313 Kelvin to 348 Kelvin. Okay, um, example number two. The Celsius temperature of a three liter sample of gas is lowered from 80 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, they wanna know what is the resulting gas. So given here is our, we got volume here. Our temperature is going from 80 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. And they wanna know what is the resulting volume, so V2. So again, when we're dealing with expressions with fractions, we're gonna cross multiply the variables get rid of them. 
v1 times t2 equals v2 times t1. Whoops. Okay, gotta make a list of variables. v1 equals t1 equals v2 equals and t2 equals. Okay, v1 is 3.0 liters. Uh, T1, 80 degrees Celsius. Uh, V2, they want, that's my X. And T2 is going to be 30 degrees Celsius. Okay, so it's looking good. My temperatures are all the same Celsius. Volume is liters, so my answer will be in liters. I'm solving for V2, so I'm going to, oh, going to have to change your temperatures to Kelvin. Um, cannot have them in Celsius. So I'm going to have to, don't forget that the, uh, Kelvin equals degrees Celsius plus 273. So I'm going to plug it into the calculator and convert all of them to, to Kelvin. So 80 plus 273 is going to equal 353 for the first one. And then um, 30 degrees Celsius plus two, 273, uh, it's going to be 303 Kelvin. All right, uh, I need to isolate V2 in this expression. So again, I'm going to divide both sides by T1. T1 will cancel out. I'm left with V1 times T2 equals, uh, divided by T1 equals V2. Uh, my variables have been converted and are consistent, so I'm going to plug into my formula now. So V1 is 3 liters. Um, T2 is 303 Kelvin. Divided by T1, which is 353 Kelvin. Alright, so I'm going to plug in the calculator now. Everything's set up correctly. So 3.0 times 303 divided by 353 uh, and we're going to answer to be 2.58, the rounding, 2.58 and it's going to be liters, which is consistent when your volume goes from 3 liters to 2.5 liters, your temperature should go down from 353 Kelvin to 303 Kelvin. Okay, uh, example number three. Um, neon occupies a volume of 25.0 liters at 300 Kelvin. If the volume is increased to 50 milliliters, uh, what they want to know what the new temperature is. Um, so again, one of the reasons why it's important we crisscross is to not deal with fractions. And I find more often than not, some people make algebra mistakes on trying to solve a denominator of a fraction. And again, to eliminate that is to always cross multiply your variables. So I'm going to do it again. V1, V1 times T2 equals V2 times T1. Uh, I'm now going to make a list of my variables. So V1 equals T1 equals V2 equals T2 equals. Okay, so uh, I have a volume. Initial volume is 25 liter, milliliters. Uh, my initial temperature is 300 Kelvin. My new volume is 50 milliliters. And my T2 is, we're looking for that. Uh, again, my units are in the same, milliliters to milliliters. I have Kelvins to begin with, and I, I will have Kelvins to end with. Uh, what's nice about this is my temperature is already in Kelvin, so I don't have to do any conversions with temperature. So it's already set that way. Um, I need to find T2 in this expression. So T2 is my X. I will divide both sides by V1. Here we go. So now I have my expression. T2 equals V2 times T1 divided by V1. I'm now going to plug in everything. V2 is 50 milliliters. There's a decimal point there. Uh, times T1, which is 300 Kelvin. Divide this by... Uh, my V1, which is going to be 25 milliliters. And everything's set up correctly. So 
So um, I'm now going to plug this in my calculator. Uh, so 50.0 times 300 uh, divided by 25.0 milliliters. And I get an answer to be 600 Kelvin. Okay, so it's consistent with Charles' law. As my volume is going up, my temperature goes up 300 to 600, and that is the correct answer.